And here we go. All right, so as I said, this is going to be the first part of the notes. Now, we're just going to be talking about line segments today, and then tomorrow we'll get more into finding the distance between two points. Uh, so this is probably the easier of the two days, uh, but just uh, we'll take it bit by bit and go from there. Mm -hmm. So a line segment is just part of a line. So if we were to think of what a line is, a line is straight. It goes on forever. It has arrows on either side. It has no thickness to it. It just exists. Now, if I were to just cut off the arrows on either side, I now have a part of a line. That is called a line segment. Now, before, if I wanted, say, A, B with this symbol over that, that would be line A, B. And I know it's a line because the arrows are on either side. Well, when we talk about line segments, so I'll just clarify that this is line A, B. Line segments is I would just draw a segment over the variables that are on the line, over the points that are on the line. So this would read segment AB or line segment AB. So when we're just talking about the existence of something, I would have line AB or segment AB. And again, we're assuming it's a line because that's what the symbol up above is saying. So that's kind of a new symbol for you guys today. Now, as we are measuring these line segments, that we could just be talking about line segments, or we could be actually getting a value for these line segments. Now, if you see either of these notations, we're just talking about it. We are addressing that it, it exists. However, if you ever see something like this, A, B, I am now no longer just addressing that it exists or that it is there. What I'm doing when there isn't a symbol on top is I am looking for an actual value, an actual measurement to this segment. So I'm looking for a value or a measurement. So on Monday, when I said that uh, in the worksheet to draw line AB, it was actually looking for you to put two points on the plane, connect them with the line and arrows on either side and you were done. Now, if I said find A B, and there wasn't a symbol on top, then I'm actually looking for you in some way to calculate the value of that segment. And since it's a segment, it's measurable. And since it can be measured, there can be a value associated with it. So whenever there isn't a symbol on top, and we're gonna get into this with notations of dealing with, um, with our angle measurements and things like that, am I looking for you to construct and to recognize the angle, or am I looking for you to actually find the value of the angle? Same thing with the line, the line segments. And the last thing I wanna talk about before we get into the actual math is the word congruency.
or for things to be congruent. Now we're gonna be bringing this word up a lot. If something is congruent, that means that something is going to be equal. So if my height was congruent to someone else, we have the same height. So it's going to have the same measurement. Now in geometry, we have a, a little symbol that allows us to know when things are congruent. And that's just going to be a little dash mark. Uh, so I'm going to draw a picture. And we'll apply our congruency to that picture. Boom. A rectangle. Now, what we know about rectangles is that the opposite sides are equal to each other, or the opposite sides are congruent. Now, I can go in and put this little symbol right here. That's just a little dash mark on the side. And I know that any other side that has that symbol is of equal length as this side. So I'm gonna put that congruent symbol over here. Now I also know that the other sides are also congruent to each other. But if I went ahead and I did a dash right here, that's now misleading because now I think that all three sides are congruent. And if all three sides are congruent, that means that all four sides must be congruent because opposite sides are congruent, which means I don't have this rectangle that I drew, I actually have a square. That's not what I want to represent. So in order to say that there are two other sides that are also congruent, but not congruent to the first pair of sides, I'm going to add a second tally mark. And you may have seen these in your standardized tests as well. I mean, the SATs have geometry and they will show you a symbol, a shape, and we'll ask you to draw a conclusion. And you may see these little tick marks on there. What that's saying is that this left side and this right side are congruent to each other. They are equal. And this top and this bottom are also equal to each other, but not equal to the first set. And then we can always add more tick marks uh, to show different levels of um, congruency. All right, so just a quick little recap. A line segment is just part of the line. If we were to have our line being labeled as AB and it was indeed a line, we'd have to put the line on top of the AB with arrows on either side. If I just wanted part of that line, so I'm cutting off those arrows, I would cut off the arrows in my notation and that means line segment AB. If there isn't a symbol above my line segment at all, I'm actually asking to find the measurement of the value. And then the last thing is congruency or for things to be congruent, we can have tick marks and that's our way of saying that one side or one amount is equal to the other amount. Now in this section, these are the types of problems that we're gonna work with. Uh, I've kind of made a promise to you guys that I'm not gonna um, overcomplicate things that don't need to be complicated. So I'm looking at the content of what we're learning. So I am going to give easier examples. And then on your homework, you'll notice that even those are not too complicated to do as long as you know what to do. So if you know what's going on, Getting the problems done will be pretty quick. If you don't know what's going on, then the problems will be pretty difficult. But I promise they're not gonna be that hard. So in this problem, it's given me some information. It's saying find AC. 
Now, since it's saying find AC, it's not asking you to say, there it is. They're actually asking you to find the measurement of AC. Now, no, you don't have to take out a ruler and measure this because also in the problem, they're gonna tell us that AB is five and BC is going to be seven. Now, in math, a lot of things, even if they are simple, have some sort of rule behind them because we can't just do something because we feel like doing it. We have to be able to do things that are mathematically sound. So there's actually something called um, a segment addition postulate. And that allows us to say, if I have one segment and I have another segment and they add together, it gives me a bigger segment. So that is actually something that has been proven and published in mathematics. And because it was published and proven and um, people have accepted it, then we're able to use it. Anyway, uh, so what we're gonna do is that we're going to find the value of AC. Now, if you looked at this at uh, the answer is 12, you would be correct. Because if A starts here and it goes all the way across to C, I am looking for this entire segment. The first segment's five, the second segment's seven. And so then I know that AC is equal to 12. And yes, this type of problem is that simple. That's why I said the homework shouldn't take you more than five to seven minutes because it's just setting up the picture, reading what it says and doing that. And of course, everything we do can just become a little bit harder. I guess before I do that, I should just do a little bit more math behind it. So AB plus BC is equal to AC. AB is five, BC is seven. So AC is 12. Just for those that like that extra explanation. For this one, we're going to find AB. Now, before I go on, so here's our unknown right there. A slight disclaimer with my pictures and geometry in general. Unless it says the image is drawn to scale, or it's saying that the triangles are congruent or that they are anything else. Unless it states it in the problem, we cannot assume anything. There is nothing that we can assume in mathematics. So if I look at this picture, it looks like B is about in the middle of A and C, just as it was over here. But in the first plot, clearly seven is bigger than five. So why didn't I move B a little bit to the left? I didn't because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what the picture looks like. It only matters what we know to be true. What I knew to be true in this first one is that the first segment was five and the second segment was seven. It doesn't matter what the picture looks like because the picture is only a representation and it's not drawn to scale. We can never assume it's drawn to scale. When I talked about my abstract geometry class that I took in college, that was my biggest frustration is because I would see something, I would recognize it and I would state it, but technically I didn't prove it. So you have to find other relationships to prove something in order to use it. Like for instance, we just proved that AC was 12 because if I add five and seven together, I get 12. It's kind of very, very straightforward and simple, but it's necessary to make that conclusion. So in this case, when I have A, B, and B, C adding together to give me A, C, so it's still the same setup as the other one, A, B plus B, C is still going to equal A, C, and I see that B is about in the middle, I can't go ahead and say that A, B must equal four. I can't make that assumption. I also can't assume 
that it's the same relationship as the previous problem where C is larger, I'm sorry, BC is larger than AB. So we can't make these assumptions, which frustrates people. I get it. But we just have to look at the problem and accept it for what it is. So our AB is our unknown value. Our BC is four. And the entire length of AC is 10. Well, what we have here now is a one-step equation, just like we went over last chapter. To solve this, I'm going to subtract four from both sides. And so the unknown value is going to equal six. That unknown value, segment AB. So segment AB equals six. The question is, uh, could I bring the AB down? And the answer is yes, yes, you could. The only reason why I didn't is just because I put a question mark in there. Uh, you could also replace it with a variable or you could just, yes, go through and put an AB here and an AB there. If that's uh, what works for you, then that works for me as well. All right, now have an example with those congruent marks. All right, so for this example, I want to find segment DE. So segment DE is right here. Also, what was added in are all of these congruent marks. So just looking at this problem, what's some information that I know? Well, I know that from A to F, this entire line segment is 25 units long. Broken up is A, B, C, D, E, and F. That forms one, two, three, four, five different line segments. Within each line segment, I'm stating that they are all equal to each other. They are all the same measurement. So I know that AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to DE, which is equal to EF. So all these segments are exactly the same. So what if we wanted to set up an equation? Now, yes, I know you can probably use some mental math right now, but again, we're just going through the process. Uh, so if all of these line segments are exactly the same, I'm going to make them all be the same variable. Uh, let's pretend that they're all x's. So this could be x, that could be x, this is x, this is x, and the last one is x. When I add them all together, it equals 25. And so my equation would be 5x equals 25. Divide both sides by 5. And x equals 5. So that means that each line segment is 5 units long. So to answer the question, DE is equal to this unknown value of five. Again, something that you could have just looked at and said, well, if there's five segments, they equal 25, just divide it by five. Yes, you were right with that. 
but what if my value was something a little more complicated, uh, like 17.3 or six pi, no, six pi plus four, something that isn't just like straight mental math. Still, yes, you're dividing by five, which is what we would do, but just why and how you get to that point it was just the math behind it. But if you understand it, you understand the process, perfect. All right, I'm gonna be putting up three problems that match these up here. Before I do that, does anybody have any clarifying questions? Okay. All right, so for these three problems, example four, you're finding EF. I just put it as slant just so you can see something different than a horizontal line. Example five, you're finding SV. So that's right there. Smartboard tends to default whenever you switch to a different color or something. And then the last one I apparently didn't want to give you, so that is B. All right, so go ahead and try these three. I'll help those that are in person in case they need any help with anything. Uh, and I'll give you a few moments and then we'll uh, go.
All right. Let's see how you did. All right, so the first one we're trying to find EF. So this is the one where we have the two segments. We can add them together, and the answer is going to be just four, because 2.5 plus 1.5 is four. Example five, I want to find SV, so I want to find part of the whole thing. So I can go ahead and say, all right, SV plus VT should equal SV. The information I know, I don't know SV, I do know VT, and I know what SV will equal, oh, not SV, ST. One step equation, little mental math, and the part of the whole was 15. And then the last one, if I know that all the marks are congruent, I know that AB is equal to BC, which is equal to CD, which is equal to DE. And so if I pretend that those are all equal, I know that if I were to add them all together, it's going to equal 12. So what four numbers, when I add them together, I can even replace them with variables if I want. 4x equals 12. Every segment is three units long. Now, if you fell victim to saying the answer was three, that's because you didn't think about what the problem was asking. The correct answer is going from B to D because we want BD. And so I actually want two of those. So BD is equal to six. All right, so that's the big idea behind this stuff. But we're in high school, we're not just adding and subtracting numbers. So let's go ahead and throw some algebra into this and give you some ones that these next ones will kind of be the more complicated problems. But still, as long as you can draw the picture and assess what's going on, it really shouldn't be that bad. Before I move on, does anybody have any questions with these three examples? All right, so we're going to start off these problems with a little bit of information. It says find the value of the variable and yz. Since there's no symbol above the y and the z, I know it's asking me for a numerical value. So they want me to find the measurement of yz if y is between x and z. Now it's just between. So it didn't say it's exactly in the middle, it just said it's somewhere between x and z. So if I were to draw this picture, if it's between x and z, I know that that is x and the other one is z, and y is just somewhere in between. So that's just my picture. I put it relatively in the middle because I want to give myself enough space for my labels, but it does not say anywhere in the problem that y is in the middle of x and z. If they did say that, then I know that X, Y, and Y, Z were the same value. They'd be congruent to each other, but it doesn't say that. So I really don't know if Y is over here, over here, or anywhere in between. I just know that it's not X, it's not Z, it's just somewhere in between. 
In fact, in geometry, there's something called the betweenness of points, which all that that's saying is that if there is a point that is in between two other points, we are one, assuming that it's collinear. So we could draw a picture like this and it would be on the line. And also, since we now have three points that are collinear, we can make the assumption that the first segment plus the second segment is equal to the entire segment. So no matter what I do, I know as a true statement that XY plus YZ is equal to XZ. So this framework, literal equation, it's called literal because we're using variables and not numbers, but this equation is going to be true for every problem with these directions because X and Z are on either end and Y is in the middle. Since, or not in the middle, it's just in between. And since that's the case, we have two segments that equal a bigger segment. All right, now on to the actual problem. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Go nowhere and I lose stuff. All right, so here is everything that I'm giving you for the first example. We are assuming the directions stay the same. So find the value of the variable. In this case, we want to know we want to know what b equals and what y z equals. Now we can't answer the second one until we answer the first one, because I need to know what B is equal to, and then I'm going to multiply it by two, and that will give me my answer for YZ. So I'm gonna draw the same picture that I have above, and I'm going to use this equation to help me solve it. So I have X and Z, I have Y somewhere in between, and the problem saying that X, Y is 10, Y, Z is 2B, and the entire thing is 50. So now this is set up to being like what our second type of problem was, where I know what one part is, and I wanna figure out the second part. So to do this, I'm gonna set up an equation. I'm going to say that 10 plus 2b is equal to 50. Because again, the equation I wrote up above says that one segment xy plus the other segment yz equals the entire segment of xz. And then I solve. So this will be a two-step equation. So I have my first answer, B is 20. And then my second answer, could have figured out from the beginning yz is 2b, which is 2 times our b value, which is 20. So I know that yz is equal to 40. And I said you could have figured that out from the beginning because 10 plus what is 50. So you could have realized that it was 40 as well. 
And if you're thinking, well, yeah, if I knew that that was 40, then all I have to do is subtract 10 from 50, that's 40, and then divide it by two, that would give me 20. And that's exactly what we did in our equation. So chances are how you would have used kind of your deductive reasoning and common sense would have been the same thing that I'm doing with algebra. Any questions with this one? Again, I'm using the directions of saying that Y is between X and Z. And for each problem, I'm trying to solve for the variable and for the segment YZ. So every single time I know that XY plus YZ is XZ. And so in the problem, they're going to give me some information. I'm gonna draw a picture, plug it in, set up an equation and solve. So we'll finish off today with just two more examples that I'm gonna have you try. We'll see how they go and then we can uh, get going on that homework. So with both of these, I am assuming that the directions are still staying the same and we're still looking for the variable and Y, Z. So example eight is going to be um, not too bad. Example nine is going to be the more complicated of the two um, problems. So if you're looking for one of the more challenging, some of you expressed that to me, uh, definitely you'll look forward to number nine. And if you just wanna make sure that you're understanding this process, the number eight is definitely the problem for you. So let's go ahead and try both of these problems, see how they go and then uh, I'll help out the people in person and then we can go over the answers. All right, so let's start going over these. So again, each of these, we are assuming that we have line segment X, Z, and in between X and Z is going to be that value of Y, and the directions being finding the variable and the value of Y, Z. So I am a visual person. I like pictures. Yes, mental math works, but seeing the picture just kind of helps keep thoughts aligned. So I have X, Y, Z. X, Y is four. Y, Z is M plus three. And the total is 13. So I'm going to set up an equation of four plus M plus three, because those are my two segments that combined when I add them, it equals my total value. Well, I have like terms, so I'm gonna combine those. M plus seven equals 13. And then subtract seven, M equals six. Now you could have also not combined the four and the three and just subtracted three, subtracted four, do it in two steps, that's fine. I did mine in two steps as well. I combined them, then I subtracted. So it's not like one way is quicker than the other. Uh, so that's the first thing I found the variable. And now that I know that M is six, 
I can go ahead and plug that into YZ. So M equals six and segment YZ equals nine. And the last one, like I said, this was definitely the more challenging one. You'll see on your homework that I did not give you one this challenging, but it really tests your algebraic skills. A lot of unknown theoretical stuff, but the process is the same. I'm going to take the first segment, add it to the second segment, and set it equal to the entire thing. So 3n minus 4 plus 6n plus 2 is equal to 5n plus 22. Now, this is a multi step equation with variables on both sides. So I'm going to start simplifying things. I'm going to simplify the left side first by combining all like terms. I have the 3n and the 6n that equal 9n. I have the negative 4 and the positive 2 that simplify to a negative 2. So minus 2 equals 5n plus 22. Now I'm going to move my constants to one side and my variables to the other. So 9n equals 5n plus 24. Subtract 5n, subtract 5n. 4n equals 24. Last step, n equals 6. Now, just don't fall victim to the fact that I'm looking for two answers. The first was the variable. The second is to figure out what does yz equal? Well, yz is 6n plus 2. n I now know is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 plus 2 is 38. So yz is equal to 38 when n equals six. Any questions with this? So again, we're kind of using our algebra and now our new found geometry logic and combining them into one problem. Okay, then again, going back to our homework, you have three problems. The first problem is asking you to find the measurement of JL. This one here, you're finding the measurement of FG, given that the entire segment is eight. And then this one, I took the same directions, find the variable, and yz if y is between x and z. So xy is 11, yz is 4c, and xz is 83. Uh, so those are your three homework problems. Go ahead and try those. Uh, we only have about six minutes, so we took most of the time. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording.